Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. We're so excited you're here to join us for worship. Whew. <laughs> I just ran up the stairs because I forgot my microphone in my office, so forgive me as I catch my breath. <laughs> um, the radio and online services are given in memory of Irene Thompson on her birthday today from Mike and Kim Thompson, so thanks to them for the sponsorship of those services. Um, the bulletins are given in memory of Winnie Anderson and his great-grandkids um, Otto, Harper, and McKinnon Anderson from their family. So thanks to them as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, this past week, Pastor Kendall went through surgery of his retina. Um, so we've had to do some reconfiguring of worship planning and different things. So there will actually not be a sermon this morning, but we will still have the readings, and we invite you to lean into those um, readings just heard from the book. So <laughs> that is just an announcement for this morning. Um, all but a great moment of celebration this morning as well. Uh, join us in celebrating the newest member of the body of Christ. Blair Lauren Hurley will be baptized today during worship. Um, she is the daughter of Brandon and Alyssa and will be baptized today. Blair's sponsors are Brianna Hurley and Courtney Larson. Uh, please keep, the, keep Blair and her family in your prayers as we celebrate and welcome God's gift of grace and holy baptism for her. Um, welcome to the family. Let's give a little preemptive applause. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, next up, and if you want to follow along with any of these announcements, they're on this salmon slip as always. Um, we have Advent or Christmas decorating today. That will be right after worship if you'd like to help um, set up some of our blue and other Christmassy <laughs> decorations. Um, we'd appreciate that help, and it'll be a fun time of fellowship. And also a Christmas-related announcement, we have poinsettia sales beginning. Um, Grace Lutheran Youth will once again be offering the opportunity for our members and friends to remember a loved one by giving a red Christmas poinsettia in their memory or honor and allowing it to be part of our chancel decorations for the Christmas season. You can place your orders before uh, or after church services um, or at the church office beginning tomorrow, and then the plants can be picked up at the church after the last Christmas service. So thanks in advance for having a sponsorship that way. Um, with that, let's rise and body your spirit for our opening hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
One more announcement and a solemn note. Um, just want to remember Deb Renalo this morning, who passed away this weekend. Um, a dear member of Grace, and we'll acknowledge her in the prayers as well. But let's just take a moment of remembrance for Deb and the Renalo family. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us raise our voices again with the hymn, Borning Cry, our baptismal song.
the con congregation may be seated. You guys didn't read that it's uh, National Wear Your Sunglasses in Church today, right? <laughs> Christ the King, where it's uh, Christ the King Sunday, so we're illuminated by the brightness of Christ this morning. Are there any kids that want to come down and uh, get a view of the baptism? You're certainly welcome to sit up in front, front here, and you can have a front row seat as as Blair is, is baptized this morning and brought into the fellowship of the faith, the family of God. If you want to follow along with the service, our service is on page 226 in the front of your hymn books. And so we'll begin now with a word of, word of baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, uh, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. So by water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And so I'll ask uh, the sponsors and uh, the parents of uh, Blair, uh, do you desire to have Blair baptized into Christ this morning? If so, then say it together. We do. we do. And then parents, uh, as you uh, bring your uh, child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with some responsibilities. Uh, to live with Blair among God's faithful people, to bring Blair to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, uh, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in Blair's hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that Blair may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others in the world that God made, and to work for justice and peace. So do you promise to help Blair live out her baptism in her life? If so, say, we do. We do. All right, and then uh, uh, to uh, the sponsors, I'll ask you, um, do you promise to nurture uh, Blair in Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? Then if so, say, we do. we do. And then to the people of God that are gathered here today, Blair's family and her family of uh, faith, uh, do you promise uh, to support Blair and to pray for her in her life of baptism? If so, then say together, we do. We do. And let's pray together. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We pray that through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. So pour out your, the Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Blair Lorne, who is now washed in these waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And Blair Lauren, you are now baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. And Blair Lauren, you now belong to Christ in whom you've been baptized. Let the congregation declare Alleluia this day. Alleluia. And then we bow our heads in prayer together once again. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, that you give all of your daughters and sons new birth. We pray that you would cleanse this day Blair Lauren from sin and raise her to eternal life with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Uh, we pray for the spirit of wisdom and understanding for her, 
the spirit of counsel and might for her, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And Blair Lorne, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, and you have been marked with the cross of Christ forever. So if I may hold her for a bit, and I will bring her, I'll bring her around. You can make the sign of the blessing on her forehead. Bring her over to Brianna. All right, let's see. And we'll bring her over to uh, the uh, parents so you can make the blessing as well. So our grandparents, there we go. Anyone else, do you want to make the sign of the cross on her forehead? Okay, you want to bless her? All right. The newest a child of God. And then we will... There we go. All right. Do you want to offer the blessing? We'll light uh, Blair's baptismal candle uh, for her, remembering that Jesus said that he is the light of the world. And so we'll say to Blair this day, Blair, let your light so shine among others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And then we'll present Blair to the congregation so that you might receive her in your love and your prayers. And then we have a, we have a word of a, a promise uh, to Alyssa and Brandon that we'll make now. Those words are printed uh, in, for you in your bulletins. So here now, uh, Alyssa and Brandon, are our, our promises to you this morning. Someone's got to be brave enough to start because I don't have my bulletin. <laughs> As they live with their child in the pathway of Christ, we offer ourselves also as ones who take Blair into our love our prayers, and our daily lives, striving to build a community rich in the Spirit of God in which to nurture her. <laughs> and then our words of welcome to Blair are also uh, printed there in your bulletins. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. Well, here she is. Shall we receive her with our applause? And of course, our love as well. I think, I think Blair wants a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Oh, right. Congratulations to you and God's blessings as, uh, as you raise Blair now in the Christian faith. We've got some gifts for you, a blanket, the, the ladies of the uh, church. Not these blankets, uh, but your blanket is in your, in your bag, a baby blanket for Blair, and then some, uh, her baptismal certificate, and then certificates for the sponsors. So thank you uh, for blessing Blair in, in this way. So, all right. Peace be with you. You can blow out the candle too, yeah. I can just hold her. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She does. She's looking at my sunglasses. Kurt Johnsrud's is our lecture this morning. First lesson this morning is from Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. For thus says the Lord, Lord excuse me, for thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, 
and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and buttered at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Second lesson is from Ephesians, the first chapter. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Gospel of our Lord, according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see the hungry and feed thee, or thirsty and give thee drink? And when did we see a stranger and welcome them, or naked and clothe thee? And when did we see thee sick or in prison and visit thee? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these of my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. 
Then they will also answer, Lord, when did we see thee hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and did not minister to thee? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And again, no sermon today, but invite you to abide with these words as we sing our hymn of the day, number 502. So I forgot to do the creed. I think I did. My mistake. <laughs> you to be seated. As I'm sure all of you have noticed, we are accompanied by some wonderful quilts this morning, um, and it's actually a day of celebration and worship today for the quilters and the amazing ministry they do 
in creating these quilts for those in need. Um, so let's follow along using our litany of thanksgiving for the quilt ministry. Gracious God, as we place our hands on these quilts, we join giver and receiver, recognizing the unity of all your people in the body of Christ. We celebrate being the children of God. We give thanks for the variety of gifts that compose these quilts, donations of fabric, thread and sewing machines, the faithful people who cut the squares, design the patterns, sew the tops, <laughs> iron the fabric, make backs and fillers, tie and stitch the bindings, provide publicity, donate boxes, pack the quilts, bring food to sustain the quilters, and contribute the money for shipping of these quilts. We celebrate generosity. We give thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make the quilts, the laughter, the shared stories, the joy of crafting something with one's hands and heart for one another and the time to reflect and wonder about the recipient. We celebrate community. We send these quilts as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one, trusting that their quilt will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. We pray that these quilts will serve a useful purpose in the lives of the recipient, that they will bring warmth in the cold, shelter from the sun and heat, a wall for a home, or a carrier for a few precious belongings. May it be a step in recovering one's life and a message of care from someone that they may never meet. We celebrate hope in the midst of life's trials. We remember those who have received our quilts in the past and pray their lives have returned to stability. We celebrate the gift of life we ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole mission of our congregation, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive, as we are knit together in the unity of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to remain sitting as we sing the quilting song. <laughs>
And now, united in faith, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain seated for our prayers of intercession. Woven into and alongside the whole body of Christ, let us pray for the church, all who are in need, and all within God's creation. Jesus, we celebrate your reign with jubilance today. You are Christ the King, the Good Shepherd, our constant guide and friend. And Jesus, you are the King who did not come into the world to be served, but to serve. Attune us evermore to your way that we might offer our humble service and live into your timeless prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, extend our hearts into the broader world this morning. Help us remember our interconnections with all you have created. Today, God, again, our global, our global companions affected by violence. We lift our hearts to the people of Sierra Leone, whose capital has just been attacked. And we continue to pray for everyone tormented by the continuing war in the Holy Land. Be with all the brave people offering aid to the injured. Be with the grieving families and with the religious leaders on the streets, seeking resolutions and providing safety. Christ the King, we trust your vision for a world where all peoples gather on your mountain. Tears are wiped away and violence is no more. Christ in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, move us to be as sheep, gathered and called by you, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, embodying hospitality to all, clothing those in need, caring for the sick, and visiting those in prison. Help us to always see your face in the face of the neighbor, stranger, anyone in need. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we thank you for your loving presence alongside the grief and sorrow in our neighborhoods, in our friends. Especially today, God, we lift up the families of Carney Brayberg, Deb Ronalo, and Arliss Buer upon their recent passings. Jesus, we trust your love in life and in death. And Jesus, please continue to work your love in all of these other names we lift up. For Weldon, Don, Mike, Rick, Daxton, David, David, John, Tammy, Brad, Tom, Jack, Lauren, Joey, Jim, Jennifer, and Monica. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, as we look towards a new church year with Advent beginning soon, help us prepare our hearts. Bless us, bless all of us as we settle into winter. Bless the fields as they rest. Spur us to offer thanksgiving to you in all circumstances, 
and gently remind us of your constant presence. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We'll continue with our offering. In your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now may the God of abundance, the God of reconciliation, the God of justice and joy in everyday situations and circumstances, bless you with love, empower you to be a sheep, <laughs> and empower you with the spirit you've been given. I invite you to trace the cross on your forehead in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, number 389.
peace serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.